Welcome to a little bit of bonus content. This isn't a proper video and it's not brilliant, but um, I thought I'd put it out there because this is a climb I talk about quite often, which is called the green. I didn't get um, great footage of it in the rear view because halfway up there's a bit of water that obscures the view. Um, and I, I'm never sure whether to do the green as a proper climb video. But because I talk about it so often, because it's like the gateway to Welsh hills for me, I thought at some point I'd better put it in. So, the green. It goes from a town called Northup, and it goes up into the Hulkin Hills. It's my favourite way to do this, and when you're coming from uh, Chester, because of the, like, the geography of Wales, obviously the north coast is penned in by water, so you have to come in at this kind of northeast corner for, for me. Um, so this is a very common way to, to approach uh, the hills in Wales. So there are a few different options, but the green is the least busy traffic, and believe it or not, the best road surface compared to some of the others. Uh, so I like coming this way. And it's a decent hill. It's something like a hundred meters of elevation and although the average is only maybe four percent it it really does pitch up in places um as always i'll tell you that my uh, my barometer wasn't really working so you don't have a good gradient i will fix that at some point i promise uh i think this bit i'm on now is kind of eight nine percent to give you an idea absolutely not zero but then it goes down again but it hits 20 percent on the on the steepest corner so this is a proper climb and because of its proximity to where like my cycling club as a junior used to meet and stuff uh, it's something like local Wirral cyclists talk about their best times up the green so I wanted to represent it on this channel at some point the reason this is bonus footage is because it's not fantastic I didn't film an intro or an outro I'm messing about with the uh, the Garmin verb <laughs> gauges there this one's absolutely ridiculous isn't it but it gives you all the information and some information you've never wanted to know about like my uh, power offset so I've not done much of the elevation yet and you get this nice descent um, and on a, a nice morning like this it's actually really pleasant you come through this wooded area and on both sides there's this like lovely paddock so cows or horses or, or sheep depending on what the farm is grazing on both sides of you you get to take that in just before the absolute horror of what's to come this road is always wet no matter what always water on the road 365 days a year and you need to change down into the small ring here because we're about to hit that 20 percent corner that goes straight through a farmyard so my approach to the green generally has been up until this point to try and do a round threshold and then to just absolutely smash this corner it's hard because you can't necessarily stand up i think i managed to get out of the saddle but you can see me picking a line very cautiously there uh, and it dries up a bit just up here but it stays steep so i i try and put as much uh, power down as i can here in order to get through this section and sometimes I wonder if actually I do a little too much, if I actually kill myself for the rest. But try and push over. Uh, and I was very confused by my Garmin because it looked like I was up on myself. It, it was showing me my own time on this occasion. I don't know the rhyme or reason behind whose time it shows me. I don't know why I'm not chasing Steve Cummings, for example, who I follow and is slightly faster than me on it. Slightly faster than me. Yeah, World Tour Pro, he's um, a fair bit faster than me. So you come around this corner, you can see I'm um, making liberal use of the whole road, and at, at this time of morning that's probably okay, but later on probably shouldn't behave like that. Uh, and it almost flattens off, but we've got two more pitches to come, so I need to be aware that I am going to have to put a lot more power in. And you can see that I've dropped down to kind of 260 to 280 watts, because we're on a on a flat, and as I keep saying, I'm, I'm rubbish at putting the power down on flats. So I need to decide how to approach this, and clearly what I've chosen to do today is um, way over threshold on the sections that are over 5% and below threshold, I guess sweet spot really, on the sections that are below 5%. I felt like I was doing pretty well. I was struggling to get on top of my breathing actually. I wasn't quite tasting blood, but you know it's one of those efforts where, well, my throat feels raw, and it's been the first chilly morning I've been out in for a long time. so. There was definitely um, a little bit of doubt in my mind about, about how I was performing because of that. 
but I did feel like I was doing well. But from here, I was thinking, well, it's not that far to the finish. I know there's one more steep section coming up. I need to just keep the power down. Below 300 watts isn't really acceptable. However, you can see that on this little actual descent, I really let that slip. I'd gone too deep too early, really, uh, too far into the red. And to be frank with you, there was a little bit of arrogance in there, thinking I was ahead on my PR, thinking, well, I can take this time to recover and I can smash this last steep section. Now, this is like 15%, ignore the 2%, absolute nonsense. I looked on Strava uh, before recording this. This is definitely sort of 10 to 15%, this last little part. I wanted to be out the saddle, pushing it hard. Um, I'll give myself a little excuse here. I did have a headwind, so I thought it's going to be quite tough as I get higher up. It's pretty exposed and it's pretty flat from here on now to the end. Uh, so it will be a little bit tough, but that's no excuse at all, really. Just keep pushing. You can see that the road is um, is rubbish. <laughs> it's absolutely full of gravel. And if you remember a little bit earlier, I did say this is the best. This is the best road surface to get to this area. Horrendous. There's also a little bit of balls involved, if you'll um, pardon that slightly um, misogynistic turn of phrase. You have to you have to back yourself through these corners because you can lose speed if you slow down too much for them and they're pretty sharp, pretty rough and quite often there'll be horse riders or cars on the other side so um, I, I can be a bit um, tentative through them and, and that's not ideal when you're <laughs> doing a hill climb. So here it, it really should have been yeah, all out. You can see that my power's really fluctuating quite a lot. Um, 400 watts, brilliant. I know that there's almost a finish line in sight, and I know that um, I really should be emptying the tank. But I do wonder if out the saddle here was a bad plan. I'm doing like 25 to 30 kilometers an hour. Perhaps I should have been getting aero, even if it does cost me 10 watts. I don't know. By the way, please excuse my terrible voice once again. I'm filming this on the same day I did Tremere here on video, uh, full of cold. So here really it should be a, a sort of triumphant blast to the finish, uh, but I'm really, really struggling. Um, and I keep looking at my Garmin and I was really confused. Now I know these 30 signs mean we're coming into the village of Recessmore. I know that Recessmore is, is pretty much the top, but it felt like it was dragging on forever. And they're slowly building more houses down this road. So normally I think, oh, a house, that's the very end. But is it? Somewhere around here, I have a full-on strop. Because my Garmin goes from saying I'm ahead to my PR's finished. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. I was very unhappy about that. On with my ride in an absolute strop. That's the green, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.